Lightroom has a new update, 11.4, with a bunch of new features that will hopefully speed up your editing workflow. Now, I've already made a really quick video explaining the preset intensify slider. You can go ahead and watch that video here. But today, we're going to be going over all of the key features that you can find in the new Lightroom Classic. And I'm going to start right now. So with this new Photoshop update, there are quite a few new features. And if you go to the timestamps below, you can skip to the feature that will help you out most. But firstly, we should discuss about how we can actually update Lightroom. So firstly, what you want to do is make sure what Lightroom Classic you are on. So we're gonna to go to Lightroom Classic in the top left-hand corner and drop down to where it says about Lightroom Classic. And you wanna make sure that you are on the 11.4 release. If you are not, then all you'll need to do is update. And all you need to do is simply go to the Lightroom Creative Cloud symbol found in the top right-hand corner, click. Then what you want to do is scroll down to where you can see it says Lightroom Classic and make sure it says up to date. If it says update available, then obviously you'll need to update it because everything in this tutorial is using the brand new 11.4. So if you haven't updated it, then this tutorial isn't necessarily going to work because they're all brand new features. Okay, so once we've done that, let's talk about the very first one on the list, which is AI masking. Okay, so AI masking is basically the premise that if you copy a mask, and paste it onto the other mask, it is going to actually copy the selection that you have made. Now, traditionally, if you, let's say, take this photo, for example, let's say we copied the sky and then paste it onto a similar photo shot at a similar time, it will copy the exact mask. And unless the sky lines up absolutely perfectly, it's not going to work and you have to redo the mask every single time. But with AI masking, what it will do is if you select the sky in one photo and then copy that actual selection, and then paste it onto another photo, it will copy the sky selection. It won't copy the mask and it makes it so much easier and a lot quicker to edit. So let's put this into practice. So we've got this photo here. As you can see, we've already edited it. We've edited it with the sky and we've actually created a mask. If I go to my mask selection here, you can see we have mask one and sky one selected. Right, so let's go ahead and copy all of this. So we're gonna press command C. And as you can see, copy selection. Now, obviously all of this is handy, but the one more important one we've got is masking. So let's go ahead and copy masking. So we'll copy that. Let's go to the next photo, which is photo 12, and let's go ahead and paste it like so. And as you can see, a new update, which it says update AI masking, takes sometimes a few minutes, depending on the speed of your computer. In this particular case, it took almost no time at all. And as you can see, it has copied the actual sky selection, not the mask, the sky selection. So if we go back into our masking selection here, you can see the mask is different. It's a copy and paste mask, but it is different, which makes it so much easier to edit. Now, they've also updated how masks work in general, uh, and they've also used the new invert tool, which I must say, I don't know why it's taken them so long to get to this point. So let's go back to our original photo one. Okay, so as you can see, we've got this mask here. Now, I want to add to this mark. I want to, what we've done there, I also want it to affect kind of waterfall. It's like they're a similar color, both quite white. So what I'm gonna do is uh, go to add, press add here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and drop down to brush. I'm gonna do is quickly, just very quickly, as you can see, I'm not doing a very good job, select the kind of waterfall. So select it and uh, drop it down here. Now, if we did this, and then we let's say we just wanted to select the actual uh, ground, we would actually, if we inverted it, we'd have to invert every single little bit of that mask. But luckily, a Lightroom Classic have fixed this by just simply one button. So all you need to do now is simply click invert. And if I go ahead and show you the overlay, it's inverted that entire selection. So it treats the selection as one selection instead of individual masks. Because originally, if you selected the sky and then inverted the sky, it would invert everything. But if you added to that mask, it would then it'll invert that and it would turn into this kind of crazy look. But they've actually fixed that with this new update. So again, I'm gonna show you, goes from this selection, then I go ahead and press invert. It'll invert everything, including the brush that we've added to with the sky selection. So. Two very, very handy features about the mask. So last one we're gonna talk about is the preset intensify slider. Okay, so the preset intensify slider is the one that I've been most excited about. It's the one that's gonna save me, to be honest, the most amount of time in Lightroom Classic. Now, 
Have you ever applied a preset to a photo and it's either too strong or not strong enough? And I say I've been there as well. Well, finally, Lightroom Classic have fixed that. So once you have got to your develop panel and you've dropped down to the left hand side, you have chosen, let's say, let's choose Sunrise, one of my favorite presets for especially landscape photography. But as you can see, when it's applied to this particular photo, it's way too strong. Now, traditionally, you'd have to go all the way over to your basics panel and then fit around with all the sliders and then you've ended up creating a custom preset and then you might save that as like a light version or a stronger version. But you no longer have to do that. I must say I'm very excited about this. All you need to do is simply go to the amount slider found on the left-hand side just above presets. And if it's too strong, simply reduce that down. Now it falls into 100, so you can minus it by 100 and plus it by 100. So it gives you the ability to increase as well as decrease the amount of power that preset has. It's almost like a transparency you would find in Photoshop. It is a really, really handy feature. And of course, if you do that and then change any of this, it will automatically change it as well. So you can apply pretty much any preset and then change the intensity of it using the amount slider. It's going to save so much time in post. So there are my three favorite features in Lightroom Classic. You have got the AI masking, the clever invert tool, and then you've also got the preset intensify slider. And make sure to write it down in the comments below which one is your favorite.